Royal Trust quiz, which will start very shortly. Uh, we're just giving a few latecomers the chance to log on. So if you still need to get a drink, get a snack, get some performance enhancing juices, whatever you need, nip to the loo. You've got a minute or possibly two, maybe a minute and a half. Let's be precise about this. Uh, feel free to say hi in the chat box uh, so we know who's there. I'm already hearing from Nick in Madrid, very uh, international audience we've got this evening. And welcome to Alex Hughes from the West Coast of Ireland. Great to have you on board. Great to have each and every one of you on board. Some seriously stimulating questions coming your way. Uh, if your chat function isn't enabled and you want to get involved, I'm told it's actually quite simple. Uh, especially if you've got a Gmail account, it's just literally putting in your name. But you want to get involved. It looks scary saying sign up to a YouTube channel, but apparently it is kind of just your name. I think we're now live. I mean, this is a bit confusing because obviously I'm a technically uh, slightly inept human being. So uh, we are, I think, live. I waffled away a bit. You may have missed some of my wonderful waffle. Uh, we're all okay, I'm being told. So welcome on board. Just a couple of seconds more before we go live live, as in you see my uh, rather disturbingly orange face, possibly too much gardening going on at the moment. But welcome aboard everybody from wherever you come from. I've just mentioned Nick from Madrid and Alex Hughes from the west coast of Ireland. I hope you're all well in these most peculiar and challenging of times, but uh, the next, uh, well, we'll try and make this as quick as possible, a bit of mental stimulation uh, before you either have supper, go to bed, it's an all generational quiz, pretty lowbrow, if the truth be told. Uh, anyway, we'll be getting going any second now when I get the nod from uh, HQ. There's a, an amazing team behind uh, this quiz from the Charlie Waller headquarters. Uh, socially distancing, of course. I'm just waiting for them to say all systems go. Pens and paper at the ready. I always get nervous with silences. Really not comfortable with them. So I'm just going to waffle and hope you appear at some point. Here comes my, uh, whatever, a jointly oldest son. Uh, here we go. North Korea. Okay. And read that. We've got, okay, my son is now, I've got a teenager. Let's just start this thing, Let's turn on this video. Hello, everybody. <laughs> It's bad timing this. I've just been given a, a, a very inappropriate um, bit of news from my 14 year old son, but um, one of theirs, their, their teachers is tuned in. We've got someone from, yes, okay, I'm not even saying that. We've got someone from Streetly. Um, we've got people from Ireland, Scotland, Wales, uh, Basingstoke and the surrounding areas. So welcome one and all to the second ever in the history of mankind, Charlie Wallet Memorial Trust Quiz Night. Um, the sequel, if you don't mind, a couple of uh, weeks ago, Xander Armstrong, the magnificent uh, Xander Armstrong, uh, beamed live from his study, which was bulging with intellectual tomes, of which mine is too, if you look closely, uh, some Ru Russian literature from the 18th century. Uh, he also had, I thought, a dangerous amount of buttons undone, but that's just by the by, everybody. Uh, but listen, it's great. Thank you for joining us. If you're a veteran and you did the first one, welcome back. If you're a newbie, uh, welcome for the very first time. Thank you for joining us. This is just a little bit of fun, which we'll try and do in 45 minutes, um, give you an option uh, from watching EastEnders or Corrie, I'm not sure what's on tonight, or the sewing bee thing. Uh, this should get those uh, mental um, gray matter bits flexing, I hope. Um, now I'm just looking at my screen here. Um, We've got, uh, obviously, the most important thing about another, maybe we don't need quite so many bits of information, but this is Ar Archie quickly. Sorry, everybody, this is a bit chaotic. Alexander was so smooth. This is Archie, who's working on the curtains. Now, move along. Uh, he's just taken, that said that Rosie Bedford is watching from Hannington in Hampshire. Uh, well done to Rosie Bedford, aged, I think, 17. There we go. That's my goddaughter, by the way. So I think it's Jake, basically friends and family and others, but look, we're here for the Charlie Waller Memorial Trust as well, um, which I'll tell you about later, but they do some incredible things, this charity um, uh, in the mental health space, uh, really trying to help people uh, deal with uh, young and old, 
but focusing mainly on the um, uh, with how to deal with their mental health and named after Charlie, and I'll tell you a bit about Charlie later. Um, but listen, we've got some rules and regulations here. There are going to be six rounds, six rounds, everybody. Uh, I'll give you the answer to the first three rounds after the third round. That's how this is going to work. And then at the end of the whole quiz, after the sixth round, I'll give you the other answers that we haven't done. Uh, it's going to be a one answer, a one point uh, per question. Uh, and for answer, some questions do have three parts, by the way, because this is worked on at high level by some very, very uh, academic people, including myself. It's uh, we've had Xander two weeks ago, Claire Balding in two weeks time, two Cambridge graduates sandwiched in between someone who's not quite so highbrow. So this is definitely a more accessible quiz for all the families. So if you're at home, all stay around the table. You might all be needed to seize the prize, which actually really isn't a prize because we're relying on your honesty to mark your papers. So you may talk to each other, you may confer, you may phone a friend. What you may not do is to use something called a search engine to find out the answers. And if you are discovered to have used a search engine, there will be very extreme penalties imposed. Don't know quite how we're going to do that, but uh, we will do that. Listen, um, as I said, point per answer, some questions do have three parts or two parts to the answer. Um, okay, um, there isn't a prize, but there is, I think, possibly the worst prize for the lovely prize draw we're going to do in history of prizes. I'm going to get going, just giving everybody a chance to log on. We have a prize draw for a tumbler with my signature on it which I think categorically must, must be the worst prize that anybody's ever sort of not wanted. But all you need to do is listen out for a password, which I'll give you and make very obvious further down the line. And then if you just sign up with your details, uh, you will be in with a chance of winning this priceless item, perhaps more valuable in time than the Elgin marbles. By the way, I'm Mark Durden Smith, for those who aren't fans of sort of graveyard shift TV and uh, uh, it's lovely to be here, friend of Charlie's. But listen, uh, we need to get on with this. We've got a few um, celebrity uh, guests setting some questions along the way. Uh, I am effectively the Kim Jong-un of this quiz, so whatever I say is final, and we will not have any um, anybody having a go at me legally or otherwise. Um, but here we go. Pens and papers at the ready. I waffled on for long enough. It's now 1938. Oh my God, I've got to shut up. Right, round one, everybody. Pens and papers at the ready. Here is your first question. Okay, so I'm now going to my hard copy of my uh, quiz. How, and I did tell you this was dumbed down, how do giraffes clean their ears? How do giraffes clean their ears? There we go, that's a tough one, isn't it? Question number two, now I hope that hasn't, cause an outbreak of family feuding uh, and someone always says they definitely know but you may have to trust them. Question number two has three parts it's true or false very simply one point for each correct answer. So question number two a true or false only male reindeers have antlers only male reindeers have antlers true or false b to b being very technical here, the world's oldest man lives in England. True or false, does the world's oldest man live in England? And two, C, is this true or false? Some wasps make honey. I'm trying to look quizzical, build the drama, because you are by some considerable margin my highest audience viewing figure this century, so I'm gonna milk this moment for everything it's worth, everybody. Um, question number three, I hope you're okay with that, let's move on. Until the Eiffel Tower was built in 1889, which was the tallest building in the world? Until the Eiffel Tower was built in 1889, which was the tallest building in the world? That's question number three in round one. Question number four, uh, geography now, so all you geographers out there who think you know your stuff, this is really going to test you. Uh, the summer season of Love Island on ITV2, which was cancelled yesterday, heartbreaking news, but it was cancelled yesterday for obvious reasons, is set in a villa. Is that villa in A, Menorca, or B, Mallorca? That's spelt with a J. I never know how you say it, but you, know, you might say Majorca. 
Is it A, Menorca, or B, Majorca, Mallorca? You know the one. A or B, that's question number four. Question number five, for those of you who might need optical assistance, grab the specs, take a look at this photo, and tell us who is this? Who is this? Simply, whose is that mouth, nose, some lips, some other bits? So that is someone's, well, a bit of someone's face, but who is it? Okay, have a quick look. I'm gonna move on at high speed once you've had a good look. I hope you've all grabbed the specs. There we go. This is brutal, isn't it? Time waits for no one, everybody. Don't know who said that, but that's not a question. Um, to the nearest decimal place, this is question number six. To the nearest decimal place, how many millimetres are there in an inch? So to the nearest decimal place, how many millimetres are there in an inch? Is it A, 25, B, 35, or C, 44 millimetres? A, 25, B, 35, C, 44. Uh, now, very exciting news for our final question, everybody. I think he's popped up on your screens already. We have a former British number one tennis player, a former world number four, a former winner of 15 career titles, beaming to us live with probably the most beamingly wide smile in modern <laughs> sport. It's Greg Rosetsky. I almost want a round of applause for Greg Rosetsky, everybody. Hi, Greg. How are oh, thank you? Thank you. I'm good. Yourself? Uh, very well, thank you. Slightly struggling here, but I um, mean, you know, I'm, I'm battling on regardless and incredibly impressed by your beamage. Lovely beams. <laughs> and, and, the lo and we like the books, but the question is, have you read any of them? Yes, I, I've read most of them, Mark. Some of my wife's and some are mine. So uh, you can pick one out from the background if you like. I can't quite see my eyesight, not quite so good. But listen, <laughs> you're all OK. What have you been doing in lockdown, working on that serve of yours? Um, working on the serve, not really too much because all tennis facilities are closed, but trying to get out for my hour of fitness, doing homework at home with the kids, which is a challenge, and just doing normal life, a little bit of cooking and cleaning. So everybody's kind of doing the same thing at the moment. Marvellous. And do you, do you have your towel? You always used to mop your brow. <laughs> kind of the question. Yeah, I'm not sweating yet. It depends It depends if I'm doing the quiz or I'm giving the questions out. Giving the questions out is a little bit easier than doing the quiz. Okay, listen, thank you for joining us. Honestly, we greatly appreciate it. All the gang at Charlie Waller love having you on board. So, Greg, by the way, interesting bit of information for you. Um, doesn't have a tennis court, strangely. National treasure, no tennis court. He has to go to the local village tennis court and he puts 50p. Hey, it's an honesty box job, isn't it? It is an honesty box. We played there last night, Mark. Hey, look, I don't, I don't want to drop my sort of celebrity friend's name. She doesn't like me very much, by the way, but um, <laughs> just by the way. But Greg, your question, please, to our quiz quizzes. Yes. Um, in 1998, I held the world record for the fastest serve at 149 miles an hour. Was that, was that serve faster or slower than the fastest bird ever recorded? A diving peregrine falcon. Wow. What a question. So... In, in 1998, was it? You were, so just briefly tell us, you, 149 miles per hour. Who, who were you serving against? It was the semi-finals of Indian Wells. I was playing Thomas Mooster, who'd just beaten Pete Sampras the round before. I broke the record once at 146 miles an hour, then broke it again at 149 miles an hour, and it stood for about two or three years. Amazing. Now you're showing off, but amazing. Was anybody hurt in that moment? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds dangerous to um, me. No, nobody was hurt, fortunately. Greg, honestly, thank you so much for joining us. Great question. Good luck, everybody. Uh, everybody, round of applause at home for Greg Rosetsky. You, you can't hear it, but I can hear a, a waft of applause. Thanks, Greg. Stay safe and keep healthy. Thank you. Take care. That's wonderful. You joined us in case, everybody, you didn't know what the question was. Was that, that record-breaking serve of 149 miles per hour, was it faster or slower than the fastest bird ever recorded, a diving peregrine falcon? There you go, everybody. Uh, that's uh, the first round uh, completed, everybody. I will just give you a few minutes to try and uh, fill any gaps and maybe uh, have your drink sorted out as well. Um, that is the end of round one. Just to quickly tell you the questions again. Uh, how do giraffes clean their ears? True or false? Only main reindeers have antlers. B, uh, the world's oldest man lives in England. Does he or does he not? and see some wasps make honey. That's all question two, three points available. Three, until the Eiffel Tower was built in 1889, 
which was the tallest building in the world for the summer season of Love Island and ITV2 cancelled yesterday a set in the villa is that villa in Menorca or Mallorca A or B uh, take a look at the photo there we go just on the side of your screen there who is it and to the nearest decimal place how many millimeters how many millimeters are there in an inch 25 35 or actually 45 we've said so A B or C I said 44 just to throw you but add one that'll do uh, and C was Greg Rosetsky's 149 mile per hour record breaking serve faster or slower than the diving peregrine falcon there we go everybody Take a look at that. We'll give you a couple of seconds to uh, have massive family disputes about the various different things. But I think all generations need to be involved to conquer this quiz. Uh, and I will rattle through the next locks. I'm very conscious you've all got things to do. Uh, and it is now 1947. OK, uh, my other godson, Orlando, is now feeling very left out. So he wants to mention too. So Orlando, thank you for watching. Greatly appreciate it. We've got um, hi from Edinburgh, while you're doing that, by the way. Uh, Spangles the Councillor says hi. Uh, hello from California, very fancy. Uh, David Charlton, thanks for joining us, David, in sunny California, I assume it's sunny. Um, but hey, lots of good stuff going on, and thank you all for joining us. It really does uh, make all the difference and is hugely appreciated. Right, I might just stop talking for a second or two. But I think we must move on to round two. Let's move on to round two. Pens at the ready, everybody. Here's the first question of round two. Which country has good King Wenceslas as its patron saint? Which country has good King Wenceslas, I always get that wrong, as its patron saint? I think I've done enough lusses in there. Is it A, the Czech Republic, B, Austria, or C, Poland. Which country has good King Wenceslas as its patron saint? Is it A, Czech Republic, B, Austria, or C, Poland? Um, that is question one of round two. Question two. In the Marvel Avengers franchise, which actor plays the role of the Incredible Hulk? So which actor plays the role of the Incredible Hulk? We're talking pre-transformation here. Not the big green thing. It's not a thing that's being disrespectful to the Hulk, but you know what I mean. It's the actor before he gets really cross and turns into the green thing. Uh, you probably know lots of the other ones, but you just, even if you don't know the name and you know who I'm talking about, describe that actor to your mum and dad if you're sitting around the kitchen table, uh, because actually the description may work. Question number three. Poor sign or poor scene, I never know how to say that either. I'm very ignorant. That should be very obvious at this stage. Is piggy, equine, is horsey, what is sheepy? Poor sign is piggy, equine is horsey, what is sheepy? Question number three. Question number four requires those who have spectacles to put them on the bridge of their nose, and take a look at your screen. Who is this? This is me at the moment, actually, but um, this, who is this? Now, the team at CWMT said I should give you a clue here at this stage, but I'm not feeling that generous. I think you need to look at, it's not the most amazing, excuse me, um, quality, but it might give you enough clues if you look closely. Who is this? Good luck to you all with question number four. Okay, let's move on. Uh, question number five, uh, where in the human body, where in the human body do you find the hammer and the anvil? Where in the human body do you find the hammer and the anvil? It's question number five, around two. Question number six, Name the last woman to win the BBC Sports Personality of the Year. Name the last woman to win the BBC Sports Personality of the Year. Okay, question number seven. We've got another celebrity question coming up now. Uh, this time it's pop 
god, pop super god, uh, pop icon, whatever you want to say. Mark Owen of Take That, the sexy one, the sexiest one of them all. There he is, frozen as we speak, but he's about to ask a question. But this bit comes with a bit of a health warning. Uh, this is kind of dangerously sultry. Listen in, here's your question. Over to you, Mark Owen. Good day, Mark. Hope you're okay and you're having a great evening. I have a question for you. What was the name of Take That's first number one single? I repeat, what was the name of Take That's first number one single? Good luck. Well, there you go. Well, he's let himself go a bit. I think we all understand that. Um, no, it looks amazing, actually. Only he could get away with that. And what wonderful skin, I think we'll all agree. And I did tell you it was going to be sultry. But look, here's the question, just in case you didn't hear it. I mean, he did make it very clear. And thank you uh, to Mark Owen for tuning in. Again, he doesn't really like me, but he was forced to do it by his wife. So there we go. Um, good friends of my wife's, as it so happens, because the children's school. Anyway, long story. You probably don't want to be bored by it. Um, but here we go. The question was, what was Take That's first number one UK single? Well, you take that, fans, it's going to be very straightforward. Um, but listen, that is the end of round two. Hopefully we're rattling through. I'm just keeping a check on time here. Uh, I'm not nearly as smooth as Zandra. It's very frustrating. OK, so that's round two. Let's have a quick uh, recap of all the questions from round two. Here we go. Here we go, everybody. Here they are on your screen. Uh, which uh, country has Cooking Wednesdays as its patron saint? Was it A, the Czech Republic, B, Austria, or C, Poland? Two, in the Marvel Avengers of the franchise, which actor plays the role of the Incredible Hulk, not before he's got huge when he's just a normal-sized human being? Three, a poor sign is piggy, equine is horsey, what is sheepy? By the way, that was one question set by Richard Hilliard, who is normally the greatest quiz setter of them all. And I said, I am very ignorant, dumb it down. So all the good questions are Richard's, all the rubbish ones are mine. Uh, so thank you to Richard for all the hard work he's put in to make this quiz the wonder that it is. Uh, number four was the photo. There he is on the right of the screen, on the left of the screen, depending on which way you're looking at. Who is it? I think all of you are looking at that with the right on the screen, so I'll stop adding these little bits in. They're really irritating. Uh, question number five, where in the human body do you find the hammer and the anvil? Question number six, name the last woman to win BBC Sports Personality of the Year. And the question seven from Marco and himself, standing by a bush, uh, with a Stetson on and a moustache, was what was Take That's first UK number one single? Give you a couple of seconds to fill in any blanks. Good luck, one and all. Remember that prize draw coming up for the tumbler. Amazing scenes. And uh, whoever gets that tumbler, I mean, I'm sure it'll become your favourite tumbler of all time. Uh, and uh, thank you for those who've already donated, by the way. Very lovely people that you are. It really is appreciated. Um, and you can be rest assured, doesn't quite make sense, but you can rest assured that your money goes to do some incredibly important work in the field of mental health. Again, I'll bang on about that a bit in a moment. Um, that is the end of round two. Um, keep the chat going. I mean, I can't see the chats. I get it's, I guess it's probably high quality chat, um, but um, I can't actually see it at the moment. So if, if my support team want to bring in any messages, the ones that aren't particularly abusive, um, I'm here in the study while you're sitting there in the kitchen. Uh, so anyway, thank you for all tuning in. That was round two. Let's move on to round three. Hope you're ready for round three. Right, question number one in round three is this. Hands of the ready. Ready, set, go. I love all this stuff done by Amy back in the office. Amazing stuff and Carrie's there as well. Back up Carrie in this particular moment, uh, but they're an incredible team. So thank you for your help gang. Uh, question number, we're basically doing it, not help, you've done it, I'm just waffling for a few minutes. Uh, so question, uh, round three, question number one. Who was Baron Hardup's daughter? Who was Baron Hardup's daughter? Question number one. I've got an uncle actually, Uncle Dick, who's also watching Understand, who was on Mastermind, got knocked out for getting one answer wrong. I mean, brutal. Anyway, question number two. Our Prime Minister, we now know by the name of Boris Johnson. Here's Rosie, everybody. She wanted her moment in the sun. There you go. Um, thank you, Rosie. Um, we've got the Lucases from Somerset. Thank you for your, your viewership. Uh, fantastic. Uh, and the chat seems to be disabled for the live stream, which is true. So, But that was before that all went down. 
So, um, I forgot to tell you that bit. That was another bit of incompetence. So our Prime Minister, we now know by the name of Boris Johnson, but what first name was he actually christened with? Was it A, Henry, B, Alexander, or C, Humphrey? Was it A, Ale Henry, B, Alexander, or C, Humphrey? It was Boris, what was his first name originally? Three, another picture for you now. Have a look at your screen, grab the optics if you need them. Who is this? Very simply, who is this? While you look at that, I'm making sure that I'm not going to keep you up till, well, before the sun goes down. So we are racing against the sun. So who is this, everybody? Have a good look. Whose are those eyes? I've got a little arrow moving across my screen, probably saying, what's going on, Mark? This is chaotic and pretty shambolic. But that is par for the course when I'm in charge of these things. Anyway, that is question number three. Question number four, let's move on. Who said it's amazing what you can do with an E in A-level art, a chainsaw and a twisted imagination? Who said that? It's amazing what you can do with an E in A-level art, a chainsaw, that twisted imagination. So all of you studying for A-level art at the moment in time, and if you're gonna, actually don't have to worry about it. You might have got an E, but it doesn't matter. They'll probably upgrade it to something like a B or an A now, which is magnificent and lots of uh, thoughts and, um, and uh, compassion goes to all of you who don't have to take your exams. I know lots of you worked so hard for this moment, but uh, your time will come. Do not worry about that. Um, okay, that is question uh, number four. Question number five, if I'm in an Italian restaurant and I'm eating melanzane, I hope that's right, and I'm eating melanzane or melanzane, which I think probably isn't how it's said, what am I eating? Am I eating A, artichoke, B, aubergine, or C, courgettes? A, artichoke, B, aubergine, C courgettes, melanzane. What am I eating? Question number six. In which of these countries do motorists die, drive on the right, not the left? Is it, uh, A, India, B, Australia, C, New Zealand, and D, Iceland? In which of these countries do motorists drive on the right, not the left. Okay, everybody. Thank you to Debs and Simon Berlez. I think that's what I always thought, you know, that was a wonderful name. Have donated some money to the charity. Thank you so much for your generosity. It all goes to such a good cause. So greatly appreciated. I know lots of you are doing it. So I'll get some more names and read them out at a later date. But for the time being, let's move on to our third celebrity guest. She's a former Olympic silver medalist. She's an equestrian eventing world champion. Um, she, in 2012, who can forget that moment in 2012 when they were going for gold and they got the silver, it's amazing. Uh, but this is Zara Tyndall. She has just arrived back from a four hour ride this morning and just leapt straight into her question. So all, pray silence please for Zara Tyndall, former equestrian world champion and Olympic silver medalist. One. Hello all you Charlie Waller quizzers. I hope you're well and keeping safe. Um, I think you're going to get a question from my husband, but I'm going to go first. So here we go. At the London Olympics in 2012, on Team GB's most successful day ever, the Super Saturday, we all remember the wins of Jess Ennis-Hill, Mo Farah, Gregor III, but I want you to name one of the other events that Team GB won that day, on that amazing day. And I'm going to be really picky, and I want the event, not just the sport. Good luck, everyone. Thank you, Zara. Amazing question. Uh, again, four hours in the saddle and then straight into the video mode. So there is the question. Um, just um, so you need to know, uh, it's basically Super Saturday. We saw all the golds in the stadium, uh, but I want to know who, which event, okay, not just the sport and the discipline, which event won an Olympic gold as well on that amazing day. Just one of them, there are a few of them. 
Um, okay, so everybody, that is all the questions from round three. I will quickly read back to the questions. I will do this quickly. I'm very conscious that many of you have things to do, Zooming calls to get onto. So let's just run through this as quickly as humanly possible. Uh, first question was, who was Baron Hardup's daughter? That's question number two, one of round three. Question number two, our Prime Minister, we know it's Boris Johnson. Was he christened A, Henry B, Alexander C, Humphrey? Three, who's that person? on the right of your screen. Four, who said it's amazing what you can do with an E in A-level art, a chainsaw and a twisted imagination. Five, what is a melanzane? What am I eating in my Italian restaurant? I'm eating artichoke. That'd be a nice thing when it's an Italian restaurant, but uh, in time we'll be doing that, but uh, not for the short term. Uh, aubergine B, C courgettes. C, in which of these countries do motorists drive on the right, not the left? A, India, B, Australia, C, New Zealand, D, Iceland. There's only one of them, by the way, one point for that answer. And then Zara's question, the London Olympics 2012. Uh, name uh, one event in which Team GB won gold that took place outside of the Olympic Stadium on Super Saturday. That is your lot, everybody. We're going to have a quick break. Uh, and thank you to the Crawshays in Suffolk. They've given a lovely donation as well. And they have noticed the Jilly Cooper books. Um, there's nothing wrong with Jilly Cooper books. I think she's a fan of the charity as well. Uh, so we've got Matt back there. And I don't think it's on the GCSE or A-level must-read list. Um, but uh, anyway, there we go. I've got some other stuff as well, but nothing quite. Ben Elton? I mean, they're yeah, not impressive, actually. Not as impressive as Greg Rosetsky's. Anyway, everybody, I hope that's all makes sense. Uh, we are going to turn on the chat function again and give you just a moment or two before we head into the fourth round. So take a break, Mark, and please be quiet, I think is what the chat says. I've got a message saying, please be quiet, Mark. So have a couple of minutes spare of my endless windbagging waffle. I need to do this now, I think, probably turn this thing off. Stop video. I'm going to mute myself as well, everybody. You'll miss me. Right, hello everybody, I'm back. Uh, I think we should crack on and tell you the answers. I think it's very important we tell you the answers. So, um, before we get to round four, okay. So, um, first three rounds, let's go. And we'll rattle through these. You're on mute. I'm on mute. <laughs> I'm not, I, I think I'm unmuted. I'm unmuted now. I think, hey, wait, your video is on, all good, all good, no. Okay, thank you very much for interrupting you too. I think I'm, am I, am I being heard, Royal Nova? I think I am. Well, hopefully you can hear me. Um, but here's the questions to the answer to round one. <laughs> it's always going to be a bit chaotic. Um, how do giraffes clean their ears? I'm think I don't think I'm muted anywhere here, so I hope you can hear me. Um, the answer is uh, with their tongues. There you go. Question number two, true or false? I'm hoping you can hear me. Uh, and you get one point for each correct answer. Only male reindeers have antlers. That is not true. That is false, everybody. The world's oldest man lives in England. That is true. Bob Waiton in Alton in Hampshire. He was 112 the other day. Amazing. Well done, Bob. And C is some wasps make honey. The answer is true. They actually do. Incredible stuff. Uh, question number three. Uh, until the Eiffel Tower was built in 1889, which was the tallest building in the world? The answer was the Great Pyramid. It is a building. I could have said structure, but if there are anybody complaining, um, I fully understand. Uh, number four, the summer season of Love Island on ITV2 is set in a villa. It's been cancelled. It's in Mallorca. There you go. Question number five, who was that person in the photo? It was 
Carrie Simons, the first lady-ish of the country. Uh, just had a baby, of course. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and question number six, to the nearest decimal place, my children obviously like slamming doors, uh, to the nearest decimal place, how many millimetres in an inch? Uh, the answer is A, 25. Well done, everybody. And then Greg set the question. He, he had that 149 mile per hour world record serve in 1998. It's now been beaten quite a few times, strangely. But he asked the question, was that fast uh, serve, uh, faster or slower than the fastest bird ever recorded, a diving peregrine falcon? It was slower. It, a peregrine falcon was recorded at 242 miles per hour. Amazing. Well done, the Peregrine Falcon. Total of nine points for that round, so count up your scores. Total of nine points. Uh, let's hurtle on to round two if we can. Hurtle on to round two. Um, here we go. Uh, which country has Good King Wenceslas as its patron saint? The answer is A, the Czech Republic. There we go. In the Marvel Avengers franchise, which actor plays the role of the Incredible Hulk before he goes green? Uh, Mark Ruffalo is the answer, the one with curly hair. Uh, three, porcine is piggy, equine is horsey. What is sheepy? Sheepy is ovine. And look at that lovely little sheepy thing. Uh, who is this? Who is this? Uh, the question is, it's Damien Lewis. The answer is it's Damien Lewis, who's read at the Charlie Waller Memorial Trust Carol concert in London and brilliantly well done as well. Uh, question number five, where in the human body do you find the hammer and the anvil? The answer is the ear. Question number six, name the last woman to win the BBC Sports Personality of the Year. It was Zara Tyndall. It was on our very screens only moments ago in 2006 uh, after her equestrian uh, world championship gold, which was amazing. Uh, and now we're going to hand back to pop legend Mark Owen and his sultry tones for the answer to question number seven. Good day again, Mark. Hope you're still having a good evening. So my question was, what was the name of Take That's first number one single? And the answer is... Pray. Enjoy the rest of your night. Lots of love. See you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, you see, I bet lots of you put down Relight My Fire or Babe. But no, it was pray. Don't be too hard on yourself. So that's all the answers to round two. There were a total of seven points there. So count up your scores. Seven to add to the nine to the maximum of 16 points. Round number three. Who? First question, round number three. Who was Baron Hardup's daughter? The answer was Cinderella. Zara Phillips. My, my son's just come in saying it was Zara Phillips. It's, it's, it's her married name. I'll explain the whole thing about nays and all that kind of stuff. Zara Tyndall or Zara Phillips. Either will do, everybody. Thank you very much for that, Archie. Good uh, inquiry there. Good inquiry. Uh, number two, our Prime Minister we now know as Boris. Uh, he was actually christened Alexander. That's B, the right answer. Three, who is this, everybody? This is Miranda Hart who's also read at the Charlie Waller Memorial Trust Carol Concert in London. And thank you to Miranda for doing that. Amazing. She is too. Question number four. Who said it's amazing what you can do with an E in A-level art, a chainsaw and a twisted imagination? Uh, Damien Hurst said that, of course. Question number five. If I'm in an Italian restaurant, I'm eating melanzani. I'm eating aubergine. Aubergine. I'm eating aubergine. Question number six. In which of these countries do motorists drive on the right, not the left? I said plural, it was only Iceland. The answer was Iceland or China apparently, but um, you know, the actual question was involved Iceland. So you must have, um, maybe it was China. <laughs> maybe I didn't see the one on the screen. I read the one off my, my hard copy. But anyway, it wasn't in the Australia, New Zealand. Uh, uh, so it was the other one. So it was D. So if you put D, give yourself a point. If there's any controversy, just have a point everybody. We're all having enough trouble as it is. And question number seven, at the London uh, Olympics 2012, name one event in which Team GB won gold that took place outside the Olympic Stadium on Super Saturday. You could have said rowing, men's four, and women's double skull, or in cycling, women's team pursuit. Women's team pursuit. It's 10 past eight. 
we have got to hurtle on everybody. I'm sorry about this. I think I blame myself. Um, but anyway, I hope you've done pretty well there. I think we've got a total of what was it, 23 points for those first three rounds. So um, good luck with all those. We're going to have a quick break, but it's not a break for you. A few minutes while I get berated uh, by the, the team for all the mishaps I have caused. Um, but during the break, round four is going to happen, which has three questions for you to debate. Um, they are round four, get your pens and paper, name the five tennis players, male or female, who've won the most Grand Slam titles. There's an Arsenal supporter coming through and thank you for your generosity so far um, on donating to the Charlie Water Trust. It's not the point of today, but anything you can give. Uh, and I know it's tough at the moment for many people, but uh, we have already raised a, a, a significant sum of money and I'll keep you updated as we go along. Um, so name the five tennis players, male or female, who've won the most Grand Slam titles. Uh, question number two in round four, name the five British-born actresses that have won the Oscar for Best Actress in the last 30 years. We're talking from 1980 to 2019. The five British-born actresses that have won the Oscar for Best Actress in the last 30 years. And question number three around four, which we're going to leave you to it for a few minutes. In 2019, Channel 5 did a poll for Britain's favourite crisp. We're talking brands here. We're talking brands. What were the top five? Crisp brands rather than flavours. So we're not talking cheese and onion and salted and all that kind of stuff. We're talking brands. In 2019, Channel 5 did a poll for Britain's favourite crisp. What were the top five? We're going to leave you to ponder those questions for a few minutes. Um, we'll leave the chat function on, uh, but please don't put any answers in the chat box because that obviously defeats the object of a quiz. Uh, but thank you very much, everybody, for the time being. Uh, and good luck with those. We'll give you a couple of minutes and I will just be quiet and then give you the, the peace and the tranquility of a Mark Durden Smithless quiz. to me. Hello everyone, while you're doing that, I think you're getting uh, stuck into round four. Um, but in the meantime, let's just tell you, uh, okay, okay, the chat is disabled. Thank you, Rosie. <laughs> Bye, guys. This family affair is, 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 has many parts to it. But listen, um, thank you so far for all those who've donated. At the end of the quiz, you, there was a little donate button, which if you feel like it, it is there. Um, for the Charlie Waller Trust, um, named after Charlie, who very sadly uh, took his own life 22 years ago. Um, for those who don't uh, know Charlie personally, a lot of you do, which is wonderful that you're still supporting the Trust, but he was a magnificent human being, one of the very best, extremely funny, um, warm, loving, and, and everything you'd want in a, in a really best mate. And um, the Trust was set up to try and make some sense out of that senseless moment, uh, because we kind of all felt that he could have been helped which absolutely it could have been. So uh, the Trust sets out on a mission with all the trainers all around the country. I know a lot of them are also involved in the quiz today. Over 40 now, you're all amazing, uh, but they go and help uh, teach people 
how to deal with their mental health. They go to school, into universities, into uh, primary care, workplace. I mean, I think I've got some stats here. Last year, we reached over 50,000 people. We delivered eight, we, I say they, delivered 880 training sessions um, in workplace, so in primary care settings. Uh, they take a positive, practical approach uh, giving teachers and others the confidence and skills they need to help young people uh, who may be struggling with their mental health. Um, it, it's really phenomenal work and evidence-based work that the Trust does. It's, it's trusted, the Charlie Wall Memorial Trust, to do things right and to give people the right tools they need uh, to cope with their mental health and to make, to make sure they take active steps to, to keep on top of it. It's something that needs nurturing. Um, in the last three and a half years, the book club, a uh, wonderful book club that send out actually mental health books to uh, lots of different places, sent out over 5,500 books to various uh, schools, which is wonderful. Um, they produce so many amazing leaflets, which I categorically know help people. Uh, I have friends for whom it really has helped. And they, start, they launched the Wellbeing Challenge yesterday. So if you haven't seen what that's all about, it's for all school age groups up to uh, sixth form. So please log on to the Charlie Waller Meg's website if you don't know what that's all about. It's very easy to sign up. Um, and it's, it, it really is um, something worth doing, especially as we're also locked in. It'll give you however confined you may be. It might just give you a few handy hints and a few things practically to do to stay on top of, of everybody's mental health, which is absolutely important at this moment in time. Um, we've had some lovely donations. Uh, thank you also for David Digby, Alison McDermott, uh, Catherine Evans, thank you for yours. Um, so I know um, times are tough, but we really appreciate all that you're doing because it does, as I said, make an enormous difference uh, to a wonderful charity which is very dear to so many people's hearts. So everybody, uh, let's move on if we can. Uh, I think we've got to hurtle on to round five, two more rounds to go. Pens at the ready, rattle through those. And again, thank you for your support and being there this evening. Okay, um, round five, question number one, Scotch Argus, Scotch Argus, is it a newspaper, a breed of cattle or a butterfly? Scotch Argus, is it a newspaper, a breed of cattle, or a butterfly? Question number one of round five. Question number two. Who is currently the most successful British non-fiction author? Who is currently the most successful British non-fiction author? Is it A, Mary Berry, B, Jamie Oliver, or C, Prue Leith? A, Mary Berry, B, Jamie Oliver, or C, Prue Leith. Number three, this is our next picture, picture question. Who is this human? Who is that? Have a good look. Assess and deliver the goods. Who is that, everybody? That's question number three of my five. Question number four, uh, which of these uh, cities is furthest from London? A, Shanghai, B, Bogota, or C, Los Angeles? Which of these cities is furthest from the centre of London? A, Shanghai, B, Bogota, C, Los Angeles? You might need a bit of discussion time with that one, but no Googling people. Um, and may I thank our next celebrity guest who's hanging on and been hanging on quite a long time because I've been waffling, but I think he's a little bit used to that. So uh, thank you. I know he's listening. Um, question number five. What's the year? What's the year? What year was Justin Bieber born? Gotta love the Bieber. What year was the Church of England ordained uh, its first female priests? This is the same year, by the way, all the same year. And what year was Nelson Mandela um, inaugurated as a president of South Africa? So what is the year? The year that Justin Bieber was born, the year the Church of England ordained its first female priests, and the year that Nelson Mandela became president of South Africa. What is the year? That deserves a bit of discussion, doesn't it? Um, question number six, which is the UK's most common bird? Is it either A, a sparrow, a B, a pigeon, or C, a wren? Which is the UK's most common bird? A, sparrow, B, pigeon, C, a wren. 
Question number seven in round five comes uh, from a man who is standing by, who I can't see as yet, unless he's quit and uh, left us. Uh, here he is, everybody. There he is. It's Mike Tyndall, everybody. 75 caps for England, two Grand Slam titles, a World Cup winner's medal, and a very, very messy, whatever that room is, sitting room. Can you not have tidied up for the occasion? It's the homeschooling room. So uh, when I get angry and I start throwing things around, when she's not doing her homework, so um, a lot of emotion goes into this room. And as you can see, it's quite messy off the back of it. It is quite messy. But it's good what, to see what? that you've put on a tux, but you still can't polish a poo, unfortunately, because if you look at your hair, it looks like you've run through a hedge backwards. Yes, I, yeah, well, look, we're in lockdown here. I have not been able to see my usual stylist for at least seven weeks. And like, obviously you can't go for the buzz cut because it makes you look fatter, so... Thank you again. You're very, you're a very sensitive difficult. soul, and it's very obvious that you might have been, you know, indulging from an early hour this afternoon. And very, but yeah, there we go. Uh, but that, that isn't necessarily the ticket to the good mental health, but it's also required <laughs> in this lockdown strangeness. But listen, um, thank you very much for joining us. What, what's your, what's your very quickly? What is your forte in the homeschooling front? Uh, what's, what's no, maths, maths is very much my forte. Is it? Um, English, not so much. Uh, but the good thing is, is because we're on a farm, the cousins are a wee bit older, so I'm doing learning their English. I'm actually learning English myself, which is uh, which is very nice. And I'm learning English of a nine year old, which is brilliant. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, maths is definitely my forte. Um, being on the farm as well, we can do the the outdoor sciency, go find flowers, go fa find bugs. Um, but that is about it. It's the limit. Marvelous. I'd like to say sport, but having passed at least 13 passes into the Twickenham stand, I'm not really even, I don't think I'm qualified to coach that. So well, You'll be delighted. There is a maths question coming up, by the way. Um, oh, is there? So stay tuned. Get the, get the family <laughs> you know, to make sure they stay tuned. But listen, you've got to give us your question, please, to our assembled masses. So yes. uh, World Cup winner Mike Tyndall from 2003, please give us your question. So my question is, in the history of the four, five, six nations, as it's been, the glorious tournament that it is, who has won the most Grand Slams? Oh, I like the question. That, that, oh, so you've won two. Um, yes. This is which team, isn't it? This is not not yeah. a human. This is which I've team. I've also lost three. <laughs> well, let's not go into that. This is a time <laughs> for celebration. Uh, but look, that's marvellous. Uh, just very quickly, your, 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 what was the, be the best thing you returned home with in 2003, a World Cup or a Royal Bride? <laughs> well, uh, she's in earshot, so it's always the Royal Bride. Absolutely the right answer, by the way. You don't get extra, any extra points. But for I, I still sleep with my medal every now and again. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. A family audience, Michael. Uh, but thank you for joining us. <laughs> Good luck uh, to all the Charlie. Thank you so much for joining us for the Charlie. Good luck to all the quizzes. Have a great night. Thanks, Sorry man. about your quiz host. He's, you know, bargain yeah, enough, enough said. I'm, I'm, I'm going to mute you. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. So there you go, everybody. That was the final question of uh, round. Uh, what were we? Round five. So which team has won the most Grand Slams over the course of the four, the five, the Six Nations Championship? Uh, you know what we're talking about. Which team has won the most Grand Slams? Now, let's just quickly rattle through those questions, everybody. Here they are. So question number one, uh, what is a Scotch Argus, everybody? Uh, is it A, a newspaper, B, a breed of cattle, or C, a butterfly? Uh, question number two, who is currently uh, Britain's uh, greatest selling nonfiction author? Is it Mary Berry, uh, Dane, uh, Jamie Oliver, or Prue Leith? Uh, three, who is that photo, who is it? Four, which of these cities is furthest from London? A, Shanghai, B, Bogota, C, Los Angeles. Five, what's the year Justin Bieber was born? The Church of England ordained its first female priest and Nelson Mandela became president of South Africa. Uh, six, which is the UK's most common bird? A, Sparrow, B, Pigeon, C, Wren. And seven, in the history of the six, five, four nations, you know, the championship happens every uh, springtime. Normally, sadly, not completed this year. But in other words, the annual International Rugby Championship, which team has won the most Grand Slams? That is Mike Tyndall's question. Well done so far for all of you. There might be some 100 percenters out there. Who knows? So on to our final round, everybody. Our final round. Here we go. Final round time. Let's hurtle through this. Uh, question number one. Round six, the final round. What's the year again? We're getting one year. 
Charlie's favourite song for some reason was Daydream Believers by the Monkees. Uh, went to number one in the US, but what year did he go to number one in the US? Actors Will Ferrell, Pamela Anderson, Vin Diesel, Nicole Kidman and Jason Statham were born in this year. And also Milton Keynes was founded as a new town by order in council. So Milton Keynes was found. What was that year that all of that happened? That's question number one. Again, I think maybe a little bit of debate required. Question number two. What name was given to villages in England and Wales from which all their members of the armed forces survived World War I? What name was given to villages in England and Wales uh, from which all their members of the armed forces survived World War I? What were they called, those villages? They were lucky enough to have all the members of the villages, uh, village survive the First World War. Our final picture question, have a look. Who is this? Who is this? Who is that person? Whose eyes are those? Who owns those irises and corneas? I don't know very much about the eyes. I hope that's right. Anyway, who is that? Bit of debate. Time to move on. Question number four. Uh, this is a really a good question. I promised Mike Tyndall a maths question, and this is it. Uh, it'll make you sound very interesting the next time you're out and about social, um, whatever the opposite of social distancing is, social canoodling, I think. Um, and it's inspired by a number that's etched in all our minds, which is 111 for obvious reasons. But if you multiply 111,111,111, so basically if you multiply 111, 111, 111 by itself, what number do you get? Sounds a bit confusing, but if you multiply 111, 111, 111, nine ones by itself, what number do you get? If you don't know, when you know the answer, you're gonna be telling everybody, it's just one of those great things. Um, write the number down, everybody. Uh, you know, it might help, you never know. Um, okay, I hope that's okay, question number five. So many heroes and heroines are emerging out of this terrible crisis uh, and we've all been giving uh, lots of thought to those guys on the front line um, doing what they're doing. But uh, we need a, a sports question in this round. So it's about a sporting hero. Who has won the most Paralympic medals of all time? Is it A, Dame Tanny Gray Thompson? Is it B, Dame Sarah Story? Or is it C, Mike Kenny? who has won the most Paralympic medals of all time? Is it Dame Tani Gray Thompson? That's A. B, Dame Sarah Story, or C, Mike Kenny. Right, to my fifth and final guest. This is a man who won 82 caps, test caps for England. Uh, he capped in England on 51 of those occasions. He ended up with an average, I think, of 41.44, which wouldn't even get him into my village cricket team these days. But uh, in those days, it was amazing. And most importantly, though, um, he masterminded uh, uh, basically the 2005 Ashes series win, the first England they got for 18 years. Who can forget that summer? A glorious summer. Um, he is also a Strictly Come Dancing, a professional, not professional, amateur. He survived that process too. And he's very kindly going to set the next question, everybody. So I'll hand over to Michael Paul Vaughan, OBE. Right, evening all. How are you? Uh, the Charlie Wally quiz. Hope it's treating you well. Uh, hope you're smashing it. Uh, that's the quiz, of course. Uh, now, my question. Uh, I took part in the 10th series of Strictly Come Dancing. Uh, I'm sure you can all remember it. Uh, not. Um, I got 15 for my jive. Uh, this old house, Shagan Stevenson. My partner was Natalie Lowe. Very nice. Um, yeah, 15 points. Uh, dog's dinner really but um, I was quite happy with that now what I want to know is who has got the lowest score in Strictly history for any dance now is it A Quinton Wilson whoever he is B Ann Whittacombe or C the legend John Sargent good luck well that's great that's how they do in Yorkshire everybody brilliant very straightforward 
So who's got the lowest score in Strictly Come Dancing history? A, Quentin Wilson. Thank you to Michael Vaughan for taking the time to set that question. I thought it was going to be about the, the historic 2005 Ashes series, but no. Um, a, Quentin Wilson. B, Anne Whittacombe. C, John Sargent. Who has got the lowest ever recorded score in Strictly Come Dancing history? What a way to uh, nearly end. That's the penultimate question that quiz of the quiz. But question number seven. Here we go. Uh, I've given a rather big clue to this one earlier, but that's okay because we wanted you to get this one right anyway. Uh, so uh, if you're here for the last quiz, remember that Zander, the final question, had a twist with it. This one's on the same kind of theme. We're trying to get you to think about your mental health and think about uh, what you can do to look after that. Uh, so Google away. So what challenge did the Charlie Waller Memorial Trust launch yesterday for school children? It's possible forgetting that this was the final question, that I might have just babbled out the answer, but we want you to get this one right. So what challenge of the Charlie Waller Memorial Trust uh, launched yesterday, and an amazing challenge it is too. Um, so please Google away, go onto the website if you need to. We don't mind that at all. We'd love you to get this question right. And more importantly, we'd love you to uh, maybe get involved in the challenge. Uh, the more the merrier is absolutely um, the theory on this one. So, that was the final round. Uh, so we need to go over those questions very quickly, I believe. So that is what we need to do now. Here we go. Daydream Believer by the Monkees was uh, number one in the US. Charlie loved that song. Uh, that went to uh, number one. What year? Actors Will Ferrell, Pamela Anderson, Vin Diesel, Nicole Kidman, Jason Statham. They were all born. Milton Keynes was found as a new town. What was the year? Two. What was the name given to villages in England and Wales from which all their members of the armed forces survived World War One? Three. I take a look at the photo, who is that? Who is that? You may think, oh, I don't know who is it, but just give it a go. Uh, question number four, what is the total when multiplying 111, 111, 111 by itself? Question number five, which sporting hero has won the most Paralympic medals? A uh, Dame Tanny Gray Thompson, it was A, B, Dame Sarah Story, a C, Mike Kenny, C, who received the lowest ever recorded score on Strictly Come Dancing was A, Quentin Wilson, B, Anne Whittacombe, or C, John Sargent. And seven, what challenge did the Charlie Waller Memorial Trust launch yesterday for school children? And thank you all uh, so far for your donation. We've raised over a thousand pounds, which is marvelous to add to uh, the rolling total of the quiz night. So thank you, um, incredibly thank you. I and mean, there's a groveling gratitude moment for your generosity. Uh, and if you feel like getting involved, there are other ways to do it. And I'll tell you about that in a moment. Uh, but that is the final roundup of the questions, which is very exciting. So, um, a few minutes to mull over anything you need to um, finish. I'm just looking at the time. We've got to get this in within the hour. I think it's just within the hour. I'm sorry it's taken so long. You know it was possibly going to happen if you know me. Um, but thank you for all your, um, you're basically, you're, you're all turning up because it's lovely. And um, I did say we were going to have the prize draw. I know no one wants the tumbler. Um, but the fact is someone has to have the tumbler. It's just, you know, policy. So we, if you do want to make a donation, even two pounds will enable us to send out a pack of resources to a school to help young people. So however small or large your donation can be, it will go to do something really, really vital. So um, if you've got any loose change, really two pounds can, can help young people in a school somewhere um, or in a university or but send out um, other stuff to all the, uh, the primary care workers. So honestly, it would be great for you to receive whatever you might have in these difficult times. And we do hope it's not too difficult for the majority of you, because I know there have been some very sad days uh, for so many people in the country and around the world. Um, anyway, do what you can. Um, and it will be greatly appreciated. So I now have to give you the answers to the three rounds we've just had that you don't have the answers to. So let's crack on with that. Name the five tennis players, male or female, who've won the most Grand Slam titles. Margaret Court is one of them. Serena Williams, Steffi Graf, Roger Federer, and Helen Wills Moody. If you got all five, well done, that's five points. If you only got four, four points, three, three points, you know, you know how that works. Um, question number two was name the five British-born actresses that have been uh, won the Oscar for Best Actress in the Last 30 Years. They are Olivia Coleman, Norfolk-born, Dame Helen Mirren, Paddington-born, Dame Emma Thompson, I 
think where she'd Hammersmith, I think. Uh, Kate Winslet, Reading, uh, Berkshire, and Jessica Tandy, uh, the driving Miss Daisy, was born in Hackney. Um, and not Julianne Moore, Juliana Moore, because she wasn't actually born in this country, even though we sometimes claim her, she was born in the US. And this probably would have really got you all exercised, but name Britain's top five favorite Chris brands as compiled by the Channel 5 in 2019. Um, here we go, Walkers, Pringles, Doritos, Kettle, McCoy's. I cannot believe Quavers wasn't on that list. And I know there'll be other people as just as indignant as I am. Anyway, that was round four's answers. That was 15 points in total. So add those to your tally, see how you're doing. Looking forward to seeing how people got on. Uh, round number five, the answer to round number five now. Um, seven points in total available on this one. Scott Argus, is it a newspaper, a breed of cattle or a butterfly? It's a butterfly, it's a butterfly. Uh, who's currently the most successful British nonfiction author? Jamie Oliver is the most uh, successful British nonfiction author. Who is this, everybody? Now, some people thought that was David Dimbleby, but it's actually Chris Tarrant, who is doing the next but one quiz on June the 2nd. And thank you very much to Chris for agreeing to take up the mantle. Claire Balding on May the 19th. Claire's doing that, and that'll be fantastic. A proper professional doing the job. Chris Tarrant after that. So please do keep coming back on Tuesday nights. It's becoming a thing, and I hope you're enjoying it. So thank you to Chris for doing that. Uh, but that was him and not David Dimbleby. I think that maybe split the nation. I thank you also a quick mention to uh, Will Dawson, who's running from Hampshire to the Emirates, the, the, the equivalent of 200 kilometres before his birthday on June the 21st, raising money for the Charlie Waller. So thank you very much for Will Dawson for doing that. And so many people doing so many great things for the Trust and for so many different charities. Uh, so well done, all of you. Um, which of these cities is furthest from London, Shanghai, Bogota or Los Angeles? Shanghai is furthest from London. It's a long way as well. I, think it's, anyway, I, I looked it up and I forgot. So it's a long way. Take my word for it. What's the year Justin Bieber was born? The Church of England ordained its first female priest. Nelson Mandela became president of South Africa. It was 1994. The year before that famous 1995 Springbok victory in the World Cup, of course. We'll all remember those photos. Which is the UK's most common bird? The answer is a wren. It wasn't a sparrow or a pigeon. It's a wren. Don't be too hard on those who said other answers and you put it down, you just forgive them. And Mike Tindall set the question uh, in the uh, six, five, four nations championship, who has won the most grand slams? I know there's a lot of Welsh people out there saying it has to be Wales. It's actually England by a grand slam. 13 grand slams to England, 12 to Wales. I think it's nine to France and then a few others down the line. I think Ireland are next in nine, obviously. So well done, you've got all those right, everybody. Seven points in total, round six. And let's have the answers to round six. Here we go. Uh, what is the year? Charlie's favourite song, Daydream Believer by the Monkees, was number one in the US. Uh, Will Ferrell, Pamela Anderson, Vin Diesel, Nicole Kidman, Jason Statham, Ali Louie were born. Milton Keynes was uh, named a new town. 1967 is the right answer. It was 1967. Uh, what name was given to the villages in England and Wales from which all their members of the armed forces survived World War I? They are called thankful villages. I think it's a lovely question, especially at this moment in time. And here's hoping there are lots of thankful villages come the end of this uh, moment that we're living through. Question number three, who is this? This is Phoebe Waller-Bridge, the brilliant Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who's a patron of the Charlie Waller Memorial Trust uh, and uh, absolutely brilliant at what she does. Uh, the woman of the world at the moment, I think, probably. Uh, doing so many amazing things, Killing Eve, uh, Fleabag, if you haven't seen them, uh, do uh, go and have a look. If you multiply, next question, number four, if you multiply 111, 111, 111 by itself, what number do you get? If you didn't know this, everybody, it's worth knowing. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I mean, I'm very ignorant. I, didn't know, I don't know most things, but I love that. Uh, so I hope you equally um, love that. Uh, number five, who won the most Paralympic medals of all uh, out of the three? Dame Tanya Gray Thompson, Dame Sarah Story, with Dame Sarah Story, not Mike Kenny either. So well done, her 25 she's on at the moment. Uh, number six, who received the lowest ever recorded score on Strictly Come Dancing? Was it A, Quentin Wilson, B, Anne Whittacombe, C, John Sargent? We probably men remember Anne Whittacombe and John Sargent's epic dancers, but it was Quentin Wilson, the former Top Gear presenter, who received eight. I think it was two ones and two threes. Anne Whittacombe's actually got the most ones, in Strictly Come Dancing history, but he has had the lowest score. 
And what challenge did the Charlie Waller Memorial Trust launch yesterday for school children? It was the Wellbeing Challenge 2020. Hopefully you found out this is a free interactive challenge for young people uh, to take part in to encourage them to think positively about their mental health. Um, so uh, I, we really want you, if you can, to go um, to the Charlie Waller website, the five ways to mental well-being. Um, those who basically joined last week, we, that's what we talked about, but the challenge was launched yesterday. And uh, please do spread the word if you possibly can. It's so important, whatever your age, but especially at the moment. So there were a total of seven points that round to so count up your scores, everybody. Count up your scores and rejoice. I'm hoping you're all rejoicing in a job well done. It was out of 52. Let us know how you do. Uh, put on your screens in the chat box so we can see, or well, you can see. I actually can't see it, disappointing me. Um, but I'm going to get my, my uh, elite team to come and bring me some of the scores, but I'm sure you've all done extremely well. Whether, if you haven't, do not fret, because you've given it your best, and that's all that matters. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I did promise you the tumbler. I kept on banging on about the tumbler. I think I've maybe made too much of the tumbler with my signature on it, but I think it'll make an amazing thing to throw at a wall one day. Um, anyway, we have a prize, and that is it. The password for this draw is happiness. And to enter, all you need to do is simply uh, complete the short form via the link in the description below, which will be below you now, hopefully, somewhere, and select the correct password. Here's a clue, it's happiness. Uh, entries will close on Sunday the 10th of May at 9 p.m. precisely, and we will announce the winner on Monday the 11th of May uh, on our website and the social media channels as well. So we'll make sure you all know about it and uh, we'll all celebrate with the Tumblr winner who will probably be paraded around wherever they live in an open top bus um, you'll be notified by email, by the way, once you've done uh, won that trophy. Um, only one entry per person, please. I know there'll be lots of people desperate to enter and win that, so uh, just keep it to one. Anyway, we really hope you've enjoyed this evening. I've got the Arsenal supporter coming back in with some news. Um, and here it is, everybody. Um, well done to the Hunters in Morningside. Well done, the Hunters, on 31 points. The press, some seriously, you know, clever people in the press household, I'm aware of, I got 26, so they'll be devastated because they're all quite bright. Uh, they, got, they got 50%, so maybe it was harder than I thought. Um, but well done to you guys, well done to those who are in the 30s, well done to those who are in the 40s. Brilliant stuff, um, because it obviously hasn't been taxing enough for you guys. But listen, thank you so much um, for watching. Sorry it's taken so long, it's taken most of your night, um, but you are very welcome back to the next one, Tuesday the 9th, 19th of May, a proper broadcaster, Claire Balding, proper National Treasurer as well, will be hosting, and thank you to Claire for doing that. Wonderful to have her on board. Tuesday the 2nd of June, Chris Tarrant. Um, so hopefully you'll keep on tuning in, but well done one and all. Thank you so much for joining us, and apologies for the endless waffle. Uh, it's taken a bit longer than expected, um, but um, we really do appreciate all you're doing for the charity and all you might be able to see. Oh, okay, thank you. And the last interruption from one of my children, Archie, moving. Okay, well done, thank you. And well done, <laughs> Lucas is on 26. It's nice to see my son addressing so well for the night. Doesn't want to reveal his face for fear of being mobbed. But anyway, thank you so much, everybody. And genuinely, keep safe um, and keep, keep looking after your mental health. So thank you for being with us.